So I have pretty well decided that today is the day on this 76 Chevy C30. Well, I'll crap back here to the door of the garage. <clears throat> you may notice I've got some uh, parts strode around all over the place. And that is because I'm getting ready to put some disc brakes on the back of this truck. Uh, just like a lot of these old trucks, the brakes weren't great whenever I finally got it put together and got it running. I kind of worked on the front ones and I knew I would do this eventually on the back so I didn't really give them very much attention. But basically, rundown of what I've got going on here. <clears throat> These are some brackets that I, I ordered from, seems like I might have ordered them from G-Pub or something. I don't remember. The last set of them I got, I got from Rough Stuff Specialties, but these did not come from Rough Stuff. And honestly, for the life of me, I can't remember where I got them because it's been probably a year ago since I ordered them. Over here, I just got some factory stock front brake hoses for a late 70s early 80s chevy k20 i have this fancy little set of tabs that i homemade that'll get welded on the rear end later and i had to go find a 5 8 18 which is a fine thread nut to fit on there but i think that'll work out good especially if i ever have to take them apart again and then uh, I got a new center brake hose if I need it. When I looked in there, the one that's in it actually looks pretty new. Uh, of course, got new caliper pins laying around. And then over here, I got a couple of calipers. Uh, at the time when I started gathering parts up for this, uh, was mid-pandemic. Some things were pretty hard to get. So I ended up with one brand new caliper from the parts store. And you can see these kind of look different. And I sort of wondered if maybe one of these was for a two-wheel drive truck, but I don't rightly know, to be honest. But they measure out the same. They're the same width, you know, inside where the pads go, and they're the same length out here. So I really don't care if they look the same or not. But anyway, back to what I was talking about a minute ago. Got this one new at the parts store. Robbed this one off from an old crusty truck over at my uncle's and rebuilt it with a new piston and seals and stuff. And of course, I put a new bleeder screw in it and cleaned up the banjo bolt. But of course, uh, basically just like everything else I have around here, I've got two calipers that have two different sized bleeder screws and two different sized banjo bolts. So that's going to be a grand old time. But you know what? I think it'll be just fine. Ever so gently. Now I've got a stool to sit on, which is a huge 36 and a half inch tall buckshot motor. So now the next thing to do is I'm going to have to take these bolts out and pull the axle out, mark where my spindle nut and jam nut are so I can tighten them back to where they should be unless they're already horribly wrong when I get it apart, which is possible. So we'll start tearing into that next.
And just in case any of you were wondering, yes, I broke those loose off camera with the breaker bar before I took this apart. And man, oh man, I need to find something to catch that oil. Now, axle will come right out. Well, that's a good sign. There's, doesn't look to be any water or anything in the axle. That dude can prop him up right there. Okay, so next item of business. I don't know how well you can see in there. Let me get the camera around. So, you got these spindle nuts on there. They usually take some special socket, and my special socket is going to be a punch and a ball peen hammer. But basically you got this outer one, which is a jam nut, there's a lock ring that goes in between them, and then there's the actual axle nut underneath that. And that is what holds this whole drum hub assembly and all on there in one piece. And they're not supposed to be cranked down super tight, but they are supposed to have a certain amount of preload on them. So we're going to see what's what about this real quick, and uh, I'll be right back. All right, as you can probably guess by looking at this, I didn't have any trouble getting the uh, spindle nuts off. Of course, um, par for the course for me, I couldn't find a punch and a ball peen hammer, so uh, claw hammer and a good old dull chisel work just fine and dandy. And nothing seemed funky or out of whack. The bearings looked okay. The drum is just laying right over here. And let me tell you, that that is a big biscuit. That thing weighs almost as much as the wheel and tire, which is a lot. But now, the next thing I gotta do, see these four bolts right here? Loosen those, um, I gotta do undo the uh, e-brake cable right here, which later on, and this will come at some point in the video, I'll have to figure out something about removing the e-brake cable and i don't think i'm going to take the pedal and all out i'll probably just undo the cable up under the cab and tuck it up and zip tie it because later on i may have to change calipers but i do plan on running an e-brake cable in this thing again uh, of course i've noticed some other things about the truck while i've had it apart here um, i don't know how well you can see it from this angle on the camera my hands are too nasty to really grab it but right here where my finger is in there, this thing has a broken leaf, leaf on the leaf spring. I'm not incredibly concerned about it right this moment, especially considering, you know, the leaf spring is that thick. I think one leaf on top being broke would be okay for the moment. Because um, I don't plan on hauling anything heavy or anything soon anyway. But otherwise, um, moving right along. Like I said, I'm going to... Get it here, undo the brake line off from the uh, back of the wheel cylinder, start taking these bolts out, and then probably once I've already gotten this apart, I'll deal with that e-brake cable. So here goes nothing. All right, and by the wonders of movie magic, I've gotten this backing plate loose. I still haven't undone the e-brake cable. What you didn't see me do, other than just in general, knock that off from there, was heat on this thing for like 30 minutes with a crappy little propane torch trying to break up some of the really crusty thick rust and just overall unseize this thing. But it's off. I'm gonna let it cool off just a second here. Actually, let's see. I can probably get a, uh, it's not, it's not too hot right there. Let me grab a little rag. Yeah. Come on. Bam. There we go. So, the next thing that's going to happen is I'm going to clean all this up, probably hit it with a wire brush, might even paint on it a little bit, degrease all of this uh, brake fluid that ran off on the back here, and then uh, I'm going to mock up one of my caliper brackets. I've seen a lot of these where the uh, caliper bracket 
is sort of angled up here and the rotor is like kind of in this area it's not really in the back it's not really on the top and i don't i mean there's nothing wrong with that a lot of the brackets you buy just have four holes and that's the way they go you know not a big deal they work fine but since these have 12 holes in them these brackets that i've got i'm gonna clock that rotor or the caliper rather i keep saying rotor i mean caliper i'm gonna clock it where the caliper is more down this way and in the back and more upright just i don't know i just like it better preference not a big deal so i'm gonna get this cleaned up and uh we'll see what we're looking at here and then i'll start degreasing some stuff and cleaning everything <laughs> now here is an interesting predicament so i got everything apart i kind of cleaned this up and I wire brushed around on this little landing that the backing plate went on. I actually ended up having to file on it a little bit just because of how crusty it was, basically. But the problem I've ran into is right here. Here and here on this caliper bracket, the caliper won't actually fit in this space. And I mean, it's just barely off by a hair. But I think that's odd, and it could be where I've had to get some odd calipers maybe, but I mean they're still front calipers for a Chevrolet pickup, a three-quarter ton, or even a half ton, because half and three-quarter ton trucks use the same calipers on the front. The only difference was if it was two-wheel drive or four-wheel drive. So that shouldn't be an issue but it is at least on this bracket so i guess the way i'm going to try to fix this is i'm going to get the grinder out and just ever so gently take a layer off right here and up here and i mean just barely grind it off like this thing is you know within i don't know you know pa paper thin tolerances i wouldn't say down in the thousands because it's not quite that thin it's hard for me to say but it's close to fitting in there so i'm gonna just clean that up with a grinder a little bit and come back and fool with it in a minute okay so finally got that little clearance issue sorted out you can see i've kind of beat my caliper up basically didn't have to do much more than just knock the paint off real good on both inside landings of that caliper bracket and that took care of that problem so Got that all sorted out, and now I've got my brake hoses mocked up here to run around and see how I want to route those so I can mark where I need to weld these guys. But, honestly, whenever I first got ready to do this project, I had thought about swapping these and clocking these brackets around this way and then swapping the sides of the calipers and facing the calipers towards the front. And ultimately, I decided not to do it, mostly because of this shock mount over here. But, I, you know, I didn't really realize how long these hoses are. I think I've got enough room that I can still do it. Because the way I'm going to put these on, I'm just going to push this down here for reference. These brackets are going to be welded on the top of the rear end, like so. So I should have enough room to do that. So I'm going to swap this around, get the other caliper and stick it on there. And I'll be back in just a minute. Okay, so I flipped the caliper bracket just exactly the opposite way of what it was and went and got my other caliper. So this is actually technically the front passenger caliper for a three-quarter ton four-wheel drive Chevy pickup for a K20. So... That's all there is to it. I mean, you can run these either which way. You just have to be mindful that if you run them with the calipers facing forward, that you're gonna have to swap sides. So if the caliper ever goes bad or you need to buy one, just remember, if you run this like this, this is a passenger side caliper. But anyway, I think I like this a lot better. Um, I've got the brake hose just sort of mocked in here and it's the way that it's turned is technically not how it should go in there these little tabs should fit in this notch right here but the way this lays right here is just perfect for what i need and i'm going to weld the tab right in that neighborhood right there and then a new hard line will run up there to the center 
brake hose. And I believe that'll work just fine. That tucks the line up out of the way of the spring or anything that could move and it's not rubbing against anything. But it's also tucked up where it's not hanging down lower than the axle or anything like that. So I believe that's going to be my best option. So yeah. Next thing I'm going to do here in a minute, I'm going to start putting some uh, lug nuts back on those studs and knocking those out and get the drum and the hub assembly separated and stick a rotor back on there and then I'll stick that whole mess back on here and mock it up just to make sure that the geometry is right and that this is going to work before I start welding anything or putting anything back together. So do that first and then see what happens. Okay, so I got all the studs knocked out. So this is the hub assembly. This is the drum. The hub assembly actually lays down on top of the drum. Of course, it's upside down, upside down right now. This usually faces towards the back, and this surface is laying on top of the drum. And you go to put the rotor on, which is a three-quarter ton, four-wheel drive front rotor for a Chevy pickup. Same deal. The rotor lays on this surface on this side and the studs knock in through the back. And that's it. But what I'm about to do right now is uh, I'm gonna clean this up some and get this old raunchy seal out of here and put a new seal on this thing. And then we'll put the rotor on and knock the studs back in. There we go. The seal doesn't look half bad, but it obviously had leaked some. But that's okay. The next thing we're going to do is clean this up with a rag a little bit. And I'll tap the new seal in with a rubber hammer. <laughs> Maybe, anyway. All right, I've got this thing kind of wiped down here with a rag, and so now it's time to try and tap a new seal in this baby and see how this works out. Uh, pretty nice, actually, so far. in there bam that's it new seal now it's time to stick a rotor on there all right so i got one of my rotors out here all right so i've got a new rotor out here and of course any of you guys that know me in any way whatsoever know that i only buy the finest that rock auto has to offer these rotors right here, I think were about 20 bucks a piece on Rock Auto. Also, I think my factory studs are going to work just fine. Uh, I kind of worked on that one off camera, so I think it'll be okay as well. Um, but anyway, back onto the rotors. Like I said, these were about 20 bucks a piece. I just got this out of the box, but I can't remember the brand. But that doesn't matter. You know, tomato, tomato. You can blow as much money as you want on doing this. Part of the reason that I am even doing this to this truck is because it needed brakes on the back anyway. Needed everything redone. And, uh... So, why not? This is actually cheaper than 
rebuilding and redoing the factory brakes. The, a set of shoes, just the brake shoes, I think were about 60 bucks for this thing. And it, of course it needs wheel cylinders and all that jazz. So basically the, you know, the biggest expense for this project for me was these rotors and actually buying the brackets for the calipers to go on the back. Most everything else uh, I use junkyard parts. I mean, obviously, other than buying new seals and stuff. But, you know, reusing the old studs, got the cheapest rotors I could possibly lay my hands on. Uh, I traded a core in and got one new caliper. I think it was 15 bucks. Rebuilt another caliper, so it was basically free. Um, the brake hoses, even, I got on Rock Auto, and I think they were like two or three bucks a piece. So all in all, if I had to just be making a rough estimate right off the top of my head right now without tallying anything, I'd say about 150, 175 bucks or so, you know, somewhere in that neighborhood to do this disc brake swap in the back of this truck. And I did do this once before years ago on Franken truck whenever I still had it and it was the best thing I ever did for that truck. The brakes were fantastic after that. So I'm pretty excited to get this slap back together and see what happens. But anyway, I'm going to knock these studs in and then mock this up with the caliper on, and I'll be back in just a minute. I do believe that that's going to work just fine and dandy. I don't have the, uh, you know, the spindle nuts and stuff put back on there yet. This is just kind of sitting on here, and everything's just sort of finger tight. Also, I ended up having to take that stud back out because as it turns out, I didn't have it as fixed as good as I thought I did. But, here's one kicker about this thing. After I get all this put back together, even with a wheel on it, I don't have to take anything apart. There's enough room, I can fit a new stud through the back and peck it in there. After this is already put back together and on the ground and everything, that's another fabulous bonus about doing a disc brake swap on the back of these trucks. If you have to work on the brakes or do anything that doesn't involve actually, you know, maybe putting a seal in it or something, you don't have to take the axle all apart just to service your brakes. That's the thing that sucks about these old drum brakes, unless you've got the newer style that have the slip on drums. But all these older ones, the drum is basically one with the hub assembly, so in order to do any kind of brake service or anything, you basically have to pull the axle out, you know, take the spindle nuts off, take the whole shebang apart, but not with this. It'll be just like working on the front, take the caliper pins out, replace the pads, or do whatever you need to do, and that's that. So, I'm pretty excited about this. Um, I've pretty well decided I probably won't film the other side because it's the same exact thing, just mirrored, and I'm not going to make everybody sit through that. Even if you even watched all of this video, I'd be amazed. So I'm not going to make everybody sit through it twice, but what I am going to do right now is go ahead and pull this back apart, torque the bolts down that are holding the caliper bracket on, clean the spindle up one more time real good, clean all this up some and actually start actually assembling and then the next thing will be to route that brake hose around there the way I want it and get the tabs welded. So we'll be back on that in just a few minutes. I said earlier that I was hoping to get both sides of this done today but clearly I'm not going to get both sides done before it gets dark. But I do have the rotor cleaned up and the pads put in you know, I've got everything actually assembled right here. I don't have the line soused in there tight yet, but that's just because I'm still going to have to go around and weld the tab. And uh, I think that'll probably be the next thing I do. Uh, I don't have the axle stuck back in yet because I don't actually have a flange gasket for both sides. I don't know where the other one went but I'm gonna take the one new one that I have from the parts store and lay it on a piece of gasket material because I have a roll of it, trace it out and cut it and make a gasket for this side. May actually go ahead and just make two or three of them just for good measure, 
And uh, this one, whenever I took it apart, didn't even have a gasket in it. It just had some red Permatex in it. And of course, you know, somebody had just shot a huge bead of it around there, so it was everywhere. But I'm not gonna do that. I'm actually gonna make a gasket, and then I'll probably put a little tiny paper thin layer of gasket maker on there and stick it back in. So yeah, this is coming along pretty good, but definitely not gonna get done today, unfortunately. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I'll stay there for just a minute anyway. Oh yeah. Tell you what's going to be kind of a pain, silly as it sounds, is welding this other side of this thing. Which honestly, I mean, it don't have to be welded, but I would rather I would rather it be. So let's see if we can't do something. Here. Folks, you're about to see the worst welding job in the whole world, or the best. It just depends on if I can get my head poked around here to the other side. That was an awkward angle. But you know what? I'd say that looks pretty good. Ugh, ow. There we go. Not too shabby for a, you know, welding all upside down and laying in a weird position on the ground. I'd say it looks all right. It definitely won't fall off of there. There we go, just let that soak in a little while. So the tab is for this soft brake hose. You can sort of see it in there. I gave it the old black fog. It's got a nut that holds it on. Don't know how good of a shot I just got of that because I'm not under the truck, obviously. So I was just sort of trying to go around it there. But that's what I've done there. I've decided that between the hard lines that come out of the T and the line up to the T, it's all trash so bad that I'm getting rid of it all, except for the hard line, obviously. If I have to cut it, I will, but hopefully I won't have to. Dang, I got hiccups. But yeah, so hopefully I can let that PB blaster soak in and that'll kind of get that freed up and I can get it apart here in a little bit. 
but that's probably about all I'm gonna get out of this whole project today. Um, but I mean, other than that, I mean, it's, it's more or less done, you know. The only thing I'm gonna have to do is once I get all this mess out of here is, uh, you know, put my new soft center hose in right here and just run the hard lines out to the ends of both the other brake hoses. And, you know, shouldn't have to have more than like a foot or so on each side. Actually, it'll be even less on this side because the T actually comes down the center brake hose and it's more on the passenger side. So the driver's side hard line will be longer than this one. But still, both of them will be pretty short pieces. I've got like a six foot long piece of hard line in there and that'll be more than enough. So this project's coming right along. Won't get it done today, like I said that I was hoping I would, but you know, that's not really a surprise. I think I was just kinda joking myself when I said that. So yeah, we'll pick back up on this when I make more progress. <laughs> so I'd actually forgotten all about this earlier. I said I was gonna do this first, and I ended up welding that tab and working on brake lines, but here's a metal gasket like you'd buy at the park store to go on the end of the axle. I only have that one and honestly that makes a pretty nice template and I'm gonna say if somebody can just uh, smear some RTV in there and it not leak without even putting a gasket in it then this nice little homemade paper gasket I just made with a little bit of just paper thin layer of gasket sealer on it will probably work great. Sorry I got distracted, there was a pretty nice truck just drove by. But anyway, considering I just traced that with a pencil and then cut it out with a raunchy old pair of scissors, I'd say that ain't too dang shabby. So I'm gonna stick this baby back together and I'll at least be able to put the wheel back on the truck before it gets dark. All right guys, so uh, it's the next day. If you can't tell by how bright it is out here already. And uh, I'm trying to remember exactly where I left off in this project yesterday. I think it was whenever I was uh, making this gasket to go inside of this axle flange. Um, and I can't remember if I actually even filmed that or not. But I ended up making a gasket over here because this side didn't even have one. Somebody had just squirted a huge bead of RTV like people do and slapped it back together. So I actually made a gasket, put a thin little layer of gasket maker on it just so it would stick in there. And that works out pretty good. Uh, mostly other than that, I'd gotten everything assembled on the driver's side. And so did a bunch of work off camera, did the passenger side, plumbed everything up. The brakes are actually bled and everything. The truck is drivable. I'm just gonna squat down right here. I don't know how well you can see in here, but there's my hard lines in the center brake hose. And of course I know they're all twisty around through there. I got a little bit too long of a piece and didn't feel like trimming it down. So I just bent it to shape. But there is the tab welded on this side. And obviously you can see the caliper and rotor. So everything's buttoned up, plumbed up, bled, this thing drives, and I gotta say, it stops better than it ever did before, which is, you know, the end goal. And of course, I pretty well knew that it probably would. It, like I said way earlier in this video, whenever I did the disc brake swap on the back of Franken truck, the 77 Chevy K20 I used to have, that was the best thing I'd ever done for that truck. Um, I didn't get too more in depth in, in what was left as far as plumbing the brake lines and uh, taking off the old stuff just because as far as plumbing brake lines and routing your brake hoses, that's all about preference. You can basically do that however you want to. So there's not really any need for me to get into a how-to because that kind of gives people the idea that they have to do it a certain way and that's just not true. I didn't really get much into detail about taking the backing plates and brakes off because basically these four bolts right here, you take those off, the whole thing knocks off and then other than that, you just got the e-brake cable. 
and on this thing the whole e-brake setup was already some kind of weird homemade total debacle if we're being right honest um getting the e-brake cables apart was a mess the way they were routed and the way it was put together was a mess so i sorted all that out off camera i just it was you know it was getting late and it was dark by then i didn't feel like messing with it anyway but yet again it probably would have been a bad example of what you're getting into for most people anyway because something you know is a bunch of homemade bracketry and a bunch of garbage that most people probably wouldn't encounter or maybe they would i don't really know but anyway so basically that's that's basically it uh, you know doing a disc brake swap on the back of one of these trucks is not incredibly difficult and it's really not all that complicated you know, I, the only thing I had to do any sort of cutting or welding for was to weld those tabs onto the rear end for the brake hoses, and that's it. And I'm sure I went over this earlier in the video, but all of the parts that you use for this are front brake parts for a three-quarter ton four-wheel drive Chevy pickup. So it has front three-quarter ton rotors on it in the back. It has front three-quarter ton. Actually, the uh, calipers and pads are half ton or three-quarter ton, but as long as it's a four-wheel drive. Um, so four-wheel drive, half or three-quarter ton front calipers and brake pads, and three-quarter ton front rotors. And of course, the brackets themselves that the calipers are mounted onto, I ordered those um, I still can't, I need to look this up. I can't remember where I ordered this particular set of brackets from. The last ones I got, I bought from Rough Stuff Specialties, but these didn't come from there because they were out of stock. So <clears throat> I can't remember exactly where I got them, sorry. But anyway, let me just walk around here, you know. One more little shot of that, and that's it. One thing I do need to fix though, is right here where the hard line comes into the center brake hose. Uh, the little U-shaped clip that slides in there and holds that still, the thing was really rusted and raunchy. And so, of course, whenever I took it off, it destroyed it. So I need to find a new one to go in there. But other than that, this project is done. So until the next one.